All right, and welcome. Thank you. You're still on to Moneyland with Nancy and our conversation segment. You're starting immediately. And Roland Abunta, who is the president of Nigerian Institute, Institution of Estates of Years and Valuers, is here with us already. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Okay, now quickly, we want to know what's your appraisal of the Nigerian housing sector so far? Well, um, the Nigerian housing sector is a very active sector, uh, but uh, with a lot of challenges. And um, we have known these challenges for quite some time now, uh, but we have not been able to surmount the challenges. And that's why we still hear about uh, millions of deficits in housing. So for me, it's a vibrant sector. It's a sector that has future, that has potentials, if only the nation will take housing seriously. I find it quite striking that you said we have known the challenges, but we have been unable to surmount these challenges year in, year out. We talk about housing deficits in the country. Now, why do you think, what are some of the fundamental factors that have hindered growth in that sector? Quite a number, but I will start with um, the most important primary issue, and that is the issue of planning. planning for housing. As a nation, it's no longer news that um, sometimes we don't even know how many we are and where we are in terms of spread. How many people are in Abuja, how many people are in Gariki, how many people are in other towns of the nation. So, and that derives from the fact that we're a nation that don't keep data. Yeah. We're a nation that don't have basis for planning. Most of the approaches to solving the challenges of housing have been on ad hoc basis. And for a major issue like housing, that, you know, just like the population increases, so the demand and need for housing increases. And so you use ad hoc approach to it, definitely you will not get anywhere. Because before you solve any little problem, the problem have magnified in other dimensions and in other places. So that's the problem we have. It's the first problem. Then we also have issues with the first ingredient required for housing, which is land. Access to land is still very hectic in Nigeria, very problematic. Even when you have access to land, to have genuine title over such land is also a major challenge. And of course, if you solve the issue of title, sometimes most of the plots are not buildable. They are not serviced. And knowing that housing is a generic term yeah. that does not only deal with the housing unit themselves, it deals with what makes for livability professionally. That is those services and uh, facilities that will make a person comfortable in a house. Remember, we are not animals. There are basic requirements. Sanitation, ventilation, access to good water, good network of roads. So without all that, you can't describe a housing unit or a building as having fulfilled the requirement for housing. So these are the challenges. And... Um, we are only hopeful that uh, we'll get around it properly. One of, one of the key challenges, and one of the challenges you've listed that uh, that's got struck to me is the fact that London and access to London, and you made mention of um, are the land suitable for living. I think this will, should this be said to be one of the challenges we're facing with the recent collapse of buildings, the higher the, the increase in number of collapse of buildings we're seeing in Nigeria. Is it that the lands are not suitable or the planning is poorly done? Now, we, we must be, you know, particular, if we are talking about collapsed buildings, a number of factors, maybe the state of the land before the building was constructed. You know, we are in a nation where almost everything is compromised. There is requirement for soil test before you can do major construction work on such land, particularly if it's going to go beyond the normal bungalow, you know, to high rise kind of a thing. But sometimes people compromise and uh, they don't want to do the soil test. Even when they do, they ignore the result of it. 
because the owner of the building says, do it like this for me. Do it like this and let me make some money. Because in terms of percentage, most of the buildings that have collapsed are commercial buildings, buildings that are occupied by others. Yes. When they want to build their own, they take all due diligence to make sure it's properly done. But when they are building for whether it's public school, whether it's a um, commercial complex for trading and businesses, or for housing uh, that will go to other people, the, builder, the developers tend to be careless about that. And that's why we see these buildings collapsing. It's different from the planning I'm talking about that has to do with the ability to know what do we have in terms of housing stock in Nigeria today and what do we need. And that thing we need, how are they spread? Because the need cannot be the same in all the places. The number needed in Abuja and quality or standard needed in Abuja may not be what is needed in my village. Yes. What they may be suffering there may be quality in terms of not having all the uh, type of services I had earlier in, listed out. But then in terms of units, every family is able to have a place they call home. It is not the same with urban centers. So these needs vary from place to place. And that's what requires professionally uh, determined basis so that you now plan to move from there. I want to still go back to the issue of the building collapse. We've seen, in, I think, according to data, in the last four years, over 60 commercial buildings have collapsed in the country. Now, you mentioned the fact that, that most of these developers don't really do, do, do their due diligence properly before erecting these buildings. Now, you had an institution that is also key in the housing sector. What are some of, what, what are, how do you cross your T's and dot your I's to ensure that those under, you, under your, your guidance do the right thing because in the end you would be accountable for them how do we ensure that these developers get it right maybe I should start by talking about the role of my profession maybe in housing um, we do not claim to become the builders or the engineers that construct uh, buildings but we have that special position of knowing what housing market is all about, what is happening in it, and what is required. Because on daily basis, as a practicing estate surveyor and valuer, I receive calls, I receive inquiries, and during such communication, people tell you what they want for housing and where they want it. Do you have this type? Is it properly located? When was it finished? What kind of fittings does it have? we have absolute control of that information. And so by right standing, we are the only administrators of housing that are professional in it. So we take responsibility when an estate is fully developed and we begin to administer. That's where we come in. In construction, we also do project management. And I can bet you that most of the project management, uh, project managed by estate surveyors and valuers in housing are still the best in town. Uh, those who live in SciTech Estates in Abuja, there is an estate that is very popular, it's called SciTech Estate. It's fully developed, fully managed by an estate surveyor and valuer. And it's an example in Abuja compared to what we have in Lukugume area, where you have a lot of such uh, estates in a very, very shanty and um, uh, dehumanizing conditions. So I can tell you that um, our participation is to the extent of our involvement. And of course, as a professional body, we have code of ethics and conduct. And of course, our members know that when they are involved, if you, um, if you are found wanting, the institution will discipline you and of course remove your license from you so that you will not be able to um, continue to do that damage. So our people are conscious. But where the problem comes is that every dick and Tom is an engineer in Nigeria. Everybody is building. They, some use their hand to draw for you to say just start it like that. 
And of course, government is relaxed. Government is not able to monitor development. Sometimes they allow, allow a building to be sited on, on the wrong place. And until that building is completed and people have moved in, that's when they wake up to come and demolish. demolish. Instead of doing the, prevent, the preventive measure of saying, no, you can't build here, stop from foundation. So we have a complicated uh, situation with uh, housing and building development in Nigeria. But I also think that problem is human. And if it's caused by human beings, we can also solve it as humans. Because there are right professionals in Nigeria who are supposed to man these things. And unless you involve them, um, they will not do much. You made mention of um, us not being able to know, as data being one of our problems, and not being able to know how many people we are planning houses for. Now, currently, um, reports are stating that reports state that we need additional two million housing units per annum if we are to breach the twenty million um, units gap we are having. But currently, in twenty twenty budget, we are seeing that the plan is for two thousand units. How do you think we can achieve building two million housing units per annum in ten years to achieve the deficit you have currently? Uh, well, I will, I will, I will, I will quote you from what you have said that we have planned to build two thousand in this year's budget, 2020. Is it 2020, 20, next year's yes. budget, if you like. I will just ask you to divide 2,000 by 200. So that will tell you how many people would be entitled to one housing unit, if that is truly the budget. I have not really picked it up. So it shows you a nation that does not realize the importance of housing. I can go to town telling you the defects, the implications of not planning for housing. Most of the criminal activities we have in the nation today come from those slums. Any attack that happens, you will trace that it came from one slum within and around Abuja. Because people hide, they have no identifiable address, they are there, and they can easily operate from there to go to anywhere, do their business, and come back there. I don't know whether you have been able to go to, I think it's um, Pape. If you visit yes. Pape, you would think you are in another country, not Nigeria, talk of Abuja, the federal capital city, how people are living. So some of these problems can be eliminated if we are ready to do it. But the problem of data has been a major one. And I think it's because we have, at my age, I've not known any year, any time, that Nigeria have conducted a housing survey. A housing survey is a professional survey managed by professionals themselves. It's not the same with the kind of housing census they do when they are doing um, national, census. National, census. national census. So they are world apart. Because this other one is inclusive of everything about housing. Why this other one? Are people trained to count people and also count buildings they saw on the streets? And that is not providing the sufficient data that is needed. We also know that census figures are not correct. So how can the housing figures they post? Many will want to argue with you on the fact that you say census figures are not correct because, of course, people are put there to carry out the census. So how can we categorically state that those figures are not correct? Okay. Um, because we are not a, a politician and I'm not one, I don't want to delve into that, but we know from pre-independence to post-independence till today, census <coughs> have been a major. Communities have disputed that the figure you gave us is wrong. Community have appointed, communities have appointed accusing fingers to other communities to say you over influence this. Is, 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 is there, okay, maybe because you are younger, you will not know that these things have been problems. But it is a problem. So what I'm saying in effect is that for us to achieve the correct data, we need to awesome. deliberately got, get the professionals involved and then they will establish this data. Two million, or two, uh, what do you call it? Two million housing units. Two million per, per annum. Per annum or 18 million deficit or 20 million deficit mm. has no basis at all, no empirical evidence to prove that this is really what we want.
And I insist on that, and I've said this over and over again, we'll keep juggling these figures. And some of them are hoisted on the nation by foreign agencies who took maybe 1960 census, and they keep projecting every year that Nigeria should be growing at so-so rate. But me and you know that there are many births in Nigeria that are not recorded. You don't know. There are people who give birth. Nobody records it. You're looking at me as if you're a foreigner. Are you a Nigerian? <laughs> I am a Nigerian. So we know that there are best homes that are not duly registered. Duly registered. We know that that exists. Well, yeah. I think the ministry is also working Leave on ways to, talk about to incorporate Nigerians them into the health system. Talk about Nigerians who were born. They didn't enter any register. Leave bad homes or whatever it's called. It's not so with any other uh, civilized nation who need to capture from the time a new Nigerian is brought into the world. So we have this information that are not, you know, tied together, that are not available. And so somebody decided to every year project. I don't believe we lack 20 million housing units. How much do you believe we lack? If we lack I, will, I will want to do a survey before I will believe anything. I don't want to, even if figure I tell you I, should, I want to believe now, will be a guess work. And I'm trained not to be a, as a value, not to gaze on value and figures. Okay. I work as values and figures based on gathered data. I want to also ask now, looking at a way forward in tackling the, these challenges, what is the role of public-private partnership in getting the, the, in tackling the challenges faced by the housing sector? Maybe we will take it from the point of what is supposed to be the role because that role is not seen at all. The way public-private partnership is skewed in Nigeria is skewed to favor mainly the private participation, particularly in the area of housing. Take, for example, I keep giving an example of uh, Lokogoma. Lokogoma, at a point, there was a policy of the FCT administration that there would be mass housing. And the FCT administration mapped out large expanse of land and plots and gave to private developers. The arrangement was that the private developers will put the infrastructures on those land. The contribution of government was to bring land to them. And then they plan the land, put the infrastructure, and then do development, particularly housing. But did they do that? No. Immediately they got that. Quite a number of them sold up the plots on papers without putting a single track or road or any infrastructure in them. That's why if you go to Lukoguma today, you have a number of estates that before you get to the plots, you need to enter valleys, come up and all that with zero infrastructure. So what failed? What failed was the fact that the government did not monitor the implementation. The partners in PPP have various different interests. The private sector are profit driven. They want to make maximum profit of that project. The government is the one that is supposed to protect the interest of the citizens of Nigeria. But immediately they gave them the land, gave them the papers. Everybody went home. Nobody monitored, nobody supervised. And these guys even cheated Nigerians. There are people who made deposits. If you listen to Break It a Family, you will hear a number of people that said, I paid for land, for plot, for building. And it's now four years, five years. I've not gotten a dime. Mm. I am asking for that same money I gave. But you can't find the money because the private developers took the money and diverted it somewhere else. So that is a problem with PPP. It has worked in other nations, but it has been Nigerianized and it's not working for us. I don't know of any, particularly within my area of operation, Abuja FCT, I don't know the one that is so successful, except again for the same site tech I cited before. Because you that you one might have to pay me for advert now for this, the, the site tech you mentioned. Uh, well, well you, you invited me, so I should be able to blow my trumpet here <laughs> if you like. <laughs> okay, but it, it, it's good you made mention of um, the, the issues of implementation and um, monitoring as regards to the Kukuma and plants. 
Now, I know for a fact that mass building is one of the major ways through which China and also India are moving and implementing. Now, there's this new report from United Nations where they say they should tax vacant houses around Nigeria. How much impact do you think this will make in solving housing deficits? I'm not aware that United Nations have said the oh, same thing. But yeah, I've they been said. saying it for the past five years. You have been saying it? I've been saying the same thing on program. That I was on money line once. I said the same thing. Now, look, if you drive the streets of Maitama, Even here. there are too many vacant houses. And these houses are locked up. And the people you see there are dogs and the security operatives around. And flowers. And flowers. And then you ask a question, I want to see, they say, our oh, guy is not around here. He lives somewhere else. And he locked it up. And the simple reason is because the man is not liable to anything, to anybody. That's why most of the houses are vacant. Some fix very high rents. My profession has been accused wrongly as people who hike rents in cities. That's not true. Every estate surveyor is desperate to have his property or property in his portfolios. Pass sure. on. Because unless you do that, you earn no income. If the house you are managing or your marketing is vacant, where would income come from? So we are in a hurry to lease out, to sell off properties we have in our portfolio. But if a landlord now pays a rent that is not, you know, attainable, that property will be vacant. So my suggestion that I have made before is that if a property has been vacant for over two years, the government should go there and charge tax, assess the value of the property on an annual basis, and fix a tax on it. If you do that, the man wouldn't want to be paying for an empty yeah. uh, without income. That's true. He would want to put somebody, no matter how small the rent or the income coming from that property is. All right, sir. Thank you.